welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to get into my full review and several day wear test of the new NARS. This is called the Soft Matte Complete Foundation. So as you guys know, I am pretty much dry normal. Right now I'm more normal. It's during the winter that I'm more dry. So up here on the screen is an image of all the things that I like in foundations, what I prefer in foundations, what works for my skin, just so that as you're watching this, you know what I like in foundations. I think that's important for the viewer to know what the creator that's reviewing the product looks for and likes in a foundation. So right now I'm more normal. So I've been wearing this for about four or five days now. So I have tested it with the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Rich Face Base. I've tested it with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I've also tested it with this Sicily primer right here, and then I've tested it with no primer. So I've really given this a really good test, and I'm gonna get into all of my thoughts on this. Of course, I'm going to be doing a 12-hour check-in so you can see what it looks like 12 hours later. I will also be taking you guys outside and showing you guys what this looks like in natural lighting. So let's go ahead and jump into the details about the foundation, and then we'll get into the application. So this foundation retails for $40 and it comes in 34 different shades. I bought this shade in Aruba Medium 6 and I actually wear that in the Sheer Glow in the NARS formula and it's pretty much the exact same shade. So in my experience, the shade corresponds with other shades in the line. Let's get into the claims. It's a 16 hour oxidation resistant foundation that balances oils while maintaining a hydrated skin-like finish, protects from pollution and blue light. This is a full coverage matte foundation. It's recommended for normal dry combination and oily skin. It's supposed to be a comfortable 16 hour wear, transfer resistant, sweat proof. Uh, let's see, it has microalgae and biohyaluronic acid that balances excess sebum while keeping skin hydrated and help protect the skin from pollution and blue light damage. Unique oil absorbing powders create a smooth second skin like finish. So. That is the information on the foundation. I will get into all of my opinions about this foundation later on in my final thoughts. Now, because I was reviewing this foundation and they've launched new shades in the in the soft matte concealer, so I decided to kind of pop this in the video. Now, this is not new to me. I, I, I bought this probably about a month and a half ago and I've actually been using it for an eyelid primer and really loving it because it does have that soft matte powdery finish, but it's also hydrating at the same time. So it kind of dries down matte. I do set it with a little bit of powder and then go in with my uh, eyeshadow. And I just really like the longevity that gives me when I am using it as an eyelid primer. So I thought, you know what, for the sake of the video, let's go ahead and test this and wear it as a concealer so you guys can see how it wears in case you guys were interested. This concealer retails for $30 and you actually get 6.2 grams in this little pot, but let me tell you this, you don't need a lot of this. This is pretty pigmented and you really don't need a lot. I don't recommend using a lot of this. So there are 30 shades in this concealer. It is described as a full coverage oil-free concealer that conceals and blurs imperfections with a soft matte natural looking finish. Again, it is full coverage matte finish. It is for normal dry combination and oily skin. This NARS Soft Focus Smoothing Complex contains optimal diffusion powder, which transforms the look of skin by, by blurring imperfections with light diffusing spheres. The formula delivers all day wear and high coverage that's non cakey and won't settle into fine lines and pores. So that's the details on the concealer. Now I actually wear the shade medium to ginger and I actually think that these two work well. I don't feel like it's too light underneath my eyes. I like my concealer to be about one or two shades lighter than my foundation. And being that I am wearing the shade Aruba in the NARS foundation, I felt like ginger was actually a really good match for me. And it's just not, you know, I think it blends really beautifully into my foundation. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, you guys. Let's go ahead and jump into the applications of this foundation. Then we'll jump into the application of the concealer. I'm actually gonna take you guys outside today and also do my 12 hour wear test. I have been filming so much that this has been kind of on the back burner even though I've been wearing it. 
it's been on the back burner to film. So even though majority of the footage that you guys are going to see in this video is filmed today, that doesn't mean that I've only been wearing it for one day. This is my fifth day wearing it today. So I've really been wearing it and putting it to the test and I'm going to get into all of my thoughts on it in my final thoughts. So without further ado, let's jump into the applications and I will see you guys all in my final thoughts. Let's get testing out this new foundation from NARS. And I just got the bottle today. So I've already prepped my skin with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. Um, normally I kind of swap back and forth between the Bobbi Brown and the Magic Cream. And especially with this being matte, I wanted a real nice hydrated base because I don't want it to be too matte on my skin. It says it's a soft matte. So I'm curious how this is going to perform next to like the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Foundation that just launched. You know, it's an $88 foundation and I'm obsessed with it, but I'm curious about this one. This one has a squeezy tube and the only thing, like I checked it because it looks lighter in the bottle and I was like, crap, did I get the right shade? And I haven't even used it. <laughs> and it kind of started squeezing out from like shipping, you know, how it's expanded and stuff. So it's already messy. That's okay. I'm only going to start with a little bit. I mean, that looks like a lot. I probably won't use all that because I do know that this is a full coverage foundation. So I'm actually going to use this Refer brush. I think this is the Refer 24 brush. Oh, I can't remember. This is the prototype. So there's no writing on it. It's all faded. Applying this. Yeah, it's a tiny bit too dark, but once I blend it like into my neck and stuff, I think it's going to match good. Oh, this is like, this gives really good coverage pretty fast too. Now this brush gives you a very soft application. You're applying a product like this. If you're like me and you have more, you know, dry, normal skin, you're going to want a brush that is just going to kind of lightly apply it. And you're not going to want to apply a lot. Like I've noticed that as I've aged, less is more when applying your foundation. So just go in so lightly, especially over your texture and your wrinkles. You know, you're already applying a full coverage foundation. You don't need to go in too heavy with it. I mean, I still have so much of this product left and I am not going to be using all of this. I can promise you that. So just go in super, super lightly. So that's just a light, thin layer. I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to grab just a little bit and start kind of pushing it into the skin. And the sponge, the dampness from the sponge will kind of give it a little bit more of a little bit more of a glow so it's not so matte because I can tell this is matte. I wouldn't say it's like really, really matte, but it's matte. I would say based on just barely applying it, it's more matte than the Tom Ford, but we'll see how it wears and stuff. I would probably spray my sponge with some sort of setting spray that would kind of give this a little bit of a glow to it, but for the sake of the review, I don't want to do that. But I do think that if I sprayed my sponge with some sort of hydrating spray, such as this uh, Glow Recipe Watermelon, this is the Glow Ultra Fine Mist. This is a really nice one. This Elsie, this is one of my favorites to do that with. This is the Elsie Hydra Enhancer. Um, I picked this up at Ulta. So, so good. This looks very beautiful. It's got a very like smooth texture to it looks amazing over pores so so far what I'm noticing about it is even though it's more matte than I prefer I do like the way it's making my my pores and stuff look but I put a thin thin layer of this you guys less is definitely more with this foundation and it does look really good over my texture right now it just kind of smoothed everything out I don't necessarily love it over my wrinkles but the texture and the pores just kind of like, I don't know. I like the way this looks. I think this is really pretty so far. So that's it for the application. I will see you guys in my next check. Okay, so I've been wearing the foundation for several days and I've also been wearing the concealer. I prefer to apply this with a brush and then smooth it out with my finger or a sponge. So I just basically dip my brush down into the product 
and just apply it and build it as I need. The trick with this though is you don't really want to use a lot of it. You really want to use a light hand and it's pretty pigmented as far as that goes. So, you know, you really don't need to use a lot of it. And then I'm just going to go over that with the sponge and kind of really push it into the skin. Now this is a little bit drying for my under eyes. So if I'm going to wear this concealer, I do apply an eye cream when I am applying my primer before I go in with my foundation. I've just been using like the Tatcha Silk Peony eye cream. By the time I'm ready to apply my concealer, it's pretty well dried and kind of set down into the skin. I, do, I wouldn't recommend, you know, putting an eye cream on and go directly in with this product because it's meant to be more of a soft powdery type of finish. If you immediately put it on over top of a some sort of eye cream, it doesn't have the right finish. It doesn't have the finish that it was intended to have. And so it can crease more and it can look a little bit thicker and a little bit kind of weird. It doesn't look bad. It's not like my all-time favorite, but it is actually... A nice concealer it's pretty soft underneath the eye and you know for being matte it's not bad for me I don't really prefer matte concealers just because sometimes they're just too much for my skin but it's not a bad matte concealer because it is very soft and very powdery That's it for the application of the concealer. I will see you guys in my next check-in. Okay, everyone, I am here to do a midday check-in and show you guys what this foundation looks like out here in the daylight. I'm sitting out here on my front porch. I think I applied this right around maybe 10 o'clock this morning. I had some things I needed to do today. So I applied it earlier in the day, in the morning. I would say this is about the halfway mark. I would say this has been on for about five or six hours now. So let's zoom you guys in so you can see what this looks like. So as you can see, it can get a little bit heavy in this area over the wrinkles. Whenever you're more dry normal and you're wearing a matte foundation, this is something that you need to keep your eye on because this will happen. Now, if you have really smooth skin in this area, I don't know that that would be an issue for you, but anywhere you have, you know, some texturing and some wrinkling and stuff like that, a formula like this can look heavy if you're not careful. So you can kind of see how it looks right here around the wrinkle right here. Um, it doesn't look bad over my texture. I just don't love it over my wrinkles. It looks amazing over pores. I think that's probably my number one favorite thing about this foundation is it does look amazing over the pores. Uh, as you can see, the concealer, as you can see, the concealer starts to get a little bit heavy throughout the day. Uh, it's been my experience with this concealer, you know, pretty much every time I've worn it. I feel like it just gets a little bit too heavy right in this area, which is kind of where my problematic area is underneath my eyes. So I don't love the concealer underneath my eyes, but let's go ahead and zoom in on the forehead. I do think that this foundation looks amazing on along my forehead. I think that's my favorite place, that and my pores, my pores and my forehead. It just looks so beautiful. You can see just how smooth it looks and it really smooths out your texture and your pores. If you do have a lot of texture like I do, you have to be so, so, so careful with the way that you're applying this. If you get really heavy handed with this, this is not gonna be a pretty look for anybody. Like, it just is not one of those foundations that's forgiving. And that's the reason why I prefer to apply it with a brush, because I feel like with a brush, I have a little bit more control on how much I put on. Whenever you're applying foundation, the first place you cover is your texture. You just want all of that texture covered, but, with a sponge, it can get heavy handed because you put so much in that direct area and then you start blending it out, but where you put it, you've got the most product. So be mindful of that. I think using a sponge over the pores and the forehead and all of that is not a bad thing. 
It's just, you just gotta be careful over the texture and over the wrinkles. I love how smooth it is. And I also love that it's so budge proof. I went, I wore it the other day when I went to the gym with my daughter and I was sweating so bad and it didn't phase it. Now I'm normal. If you're combo and oily, you might, that might not be your experience, but I will get into all of that later on in my final thoughts you know, about who I think this is perfect for, who I don't think should even look at this twice, and also how it compares to the new Traceless Soft Matte Foundation from Tom Ford and the new Too Faced Born This Way Matte Foundation, because I just recently reviewed both of those foundations. So that's it for this check-in. I will see you guys in my final thoughts. Okay, everyone, I'm back to give my final thoughts on this foundation and we're gonna zoom in and see what this looks like 12 hours later. It's currently 1030 at night, so I've definitely had this on for 12 hours. So let's zoom in and I'll show you kind of what the foundation looks like and then we will get into my thoughts on it. Well, as you can see, I have a dry patch right here and this foundation is definitely clinging to this dry patch. I've been wanting to pick it off for like the last three hours, but you know, I made sure that I didn't do it just so you guys could see it. So let me turn down the ring light. So see right here where it's kind of clinging to that dry patch. Uh, and then obviously I've lost quite a bit of it around my nose and it's creasing pretty bad around here. And it's looking a little bit makeup-y in that area because it's kind of pulled away and it's creasing. Now, along my texture, it actually looks really good, and I don't feel like I've lost the coverage all that much. I think it looks really good on the forehead, but let's be honest, most foundations wear pretty good on the forehead. The only time that you'll have an issue is right here in the T-zone, like sometimes it'll kind of pull away from the skin. But that one, I mean, this one's just not really doing that because it is matte. And on this side, it's still looking really good. It's just right here. That is the area that I will have issues. If my makeup is going, you know, that's where my foundation wears off the fastest is right here. And majority of my makeup, like there's only a few foundations that I have that won't break apart by the end of the night. So this doesn't look too bad for being 12 hours later. As far as the concealer, you can see that it's kind of built up and it's a little bit makeup-y. It starts to, it doesn't really wear too heavy in the wrinkles per se, even though it does crease throughout the day. It's just right here where it wears the most. Like it looks kind of thick and makeup-y in this area. I don't love that about this concealer. It's definitely not, for me. Now, with that said, I think the concealer is a nice concealer for those of you that like a soft matte. It is a nice powdery texture to it. I actually prefer the Marc Jacobs Accomplice concealer, concealer. That's the stick concealer in his range. That one I prefer over this one. I feel like that one's just a little bit more creamy, even though it does kind of have a powdery finish to it. That one is a little bit creamier and it is a little bit more forgiving on the under eyes. So I don't love this concealer. Uh, it's just kind of okay for me. However, I love it as an eyeshadow base. Like I love it. That's what I bought it for. And that's what I'm going to continue to wear it. I love it for that purpose. And it's great, like mm, 10 out of a 10 for eyeshadow primer. All right, let's jump into my thoughts about the foundation. I like this foundation. I don't love it, but I really like it. You get good coverage out of this, so do not go thick with this one. I promise you, you will hate it if you go in too thick. If you put a thin, even layer on your skin, you might really enjoy it, especially if you're normal. If you're dry, I would not mess with this one. This one's probably too drying for those of you who are dry. This, I cannot see myself using this in the winter. It's just too dry. I would prefer to use the Tom Ford uh, Soft Matte Foundation. That one gives you a little bit more hydration than this one does, and so does the 
uh, Too Faced Born This Way matte foundation. If you are normal, and let's say that you like the benefits of a matte foundation, and you have enlarged pores, and you're looking for a foundation that's going to look amazing over your pores, because this one does. That is my favorite part about this foundation. It looks amazing over this part right here. You know how you kind of have that orange peel look right here? Amazing. Like it smooths it out so beautifully. Oh, so good. So let's just say you're normal and you want to be able to wear this one, but you're like, you know, I don't want it to be too drying. I want to be able to wear it on my wrinkles without it emphasizing. Uh, I would recommend going in with a nice hydrating primer put a thin, even layer of this all over, and I would definitely prefer to use a brush. I feel like the brush with a matte, with this matte formula, I feel like a brush just really gives you a perfected application, more so than a sponge would. But have that sponge handy, because this is a foundation it, that works great if you spray your sponge with a hydrating setting spray. So for example, the third day I wore this, I wanted to see what it would look like if I did that. So I used the Magic Cream from Charlotte Tilbury, put a good layer of that on, and then I went in with the foundation, and then I took my sponge, then I sprayed this Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist on the sponge. I got it real nice and saturated. As of course, I didn't do my forehead because I love the way it looks on my forehead. I didn't do it on my pores because I love the way this foundation wears on the pores but I did it in the areas that I would feel like would be problematic, texture and wrinkles. And so I just really pushed it in and it was beautiful. Like it was beautiful all day. And the thing about this foundation is I have worn it with powder, I've worn it without powder, and I feel like both ways it's beautiful. This is not one that you have to powder because it sets down and it does give you that um, like soft powder finish, but in a very, very good way. Even though this is a matte formula, I wouldn't say that this is over drying. Like I've used matte formulas that are just thick and matte and they do not look good no matter how you wear them. This is actually a pretty thin formula as far as being a matte. It all depends on what you're looking for in a foundation. If you're wanting something that is going to really wear really well when you're putting a mask on and off throughout the day, this is a nice option. But so is the Tom Ford uh, new Traceless Matte Foundation and so is the Born This Way Matte Foundation. So I feel like if you have the Tom Ford Traceless Matte Foundation, I wouldn't spend your money on this one because they are very similar in the way that they apply and the way that they wear. I feel like both of them look beautiful over the pores. I do think the NARS looks a little bit better over the pores than the Tom Ford, but it's still, the Tom Ford still looks beautiful over the pores. So it just depends on what you're looking for as far as, you know, what you're in the market to buy. I don't know that I would just run out and grab this just to try it. I would kind of go through your foundations because you might already have something like this in your collection because this is a great formula for being a matte, but I feel like there's several formulas like this that are coming out. I think brands are realizing that there's a lot of people out there that are wanting a matte formula, but not super drying and super thick and look makeup-y. Now, if you're not careful with this one, it can be makeup-y. That's why I recommend using a brush to really do a thin layer. So again, it all depends on what you're looking for. If you are dry skinned, I recommend the Sheer Glow. That is still my favorite foundation from NARS. Even though this is a nice one, the NARS Sheer Glow is still my favorite. Just a tried and true, fantastic formula that's so dependable for me and I really love it. Now, for those of you that are combo and oily skinned, I feel like you're still going to have to use your powders with this one. Uh, because it's not super matte. It's not the Huda Beauty Foundation matte. It's not the Estee Lauder Double Wear matte. Like, this is, you're going to want to put a little bit of powder over this to control your oils. I think this does a decent job, but it's not going to do it all on its own. It needs some help, I feel like. Same thing with combination skin. Um, I think you're going to want to set those that T-zone area with the, your favorite powder that works well for you and controls your oils. I just don't see this formula being that oil controlling because you can see that I am starting to get a little bit of a shine and a little teeny bit of a dew being that it's 12 hours later. But if you have oily and combo skin and you like a soft matte, this is a 
beautiful, beautiful foundation. So those are my thoughts on the foundation. Sound off down below. Let us know if you guys picked this foundation up. Are you loving it? What do you like about it? Is, is it working out for you? Do you not like it? Sound off down below. Your guys' input is so helpful for all of us in the comment section. So definitely let us know. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope this review was helpful. I love you all so, so much. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.